Hey guys, Dave Anderson here, Helicool's Helipad. You know, I only thought I would be making a two-part video on how to prep for a Toro metal building structure in between two connexes, but I'm running into even more difficulties. So this is, this is part three. <clears throat> I first just want to start off with, this is what I had to do to get ready to get to this point. Roll it. Lots of reading, analyzing engineering prints, taking measurements of actual GERD C-channel, found out that the interior dimensions were not 40 feet, but 37 and a half, moved the electrical conduit, moved the connex and re-leveled it, found out that there were more problems, making it problematic, to mount where the prints were prompting me to, had to design and fabricate brackets for the mounting brackets to fit on, times two, drop, move, and re-level the connex the second time to the new interior dimension of 38 feet 10 and 1 half inches and re-dig and move the electrical conduit the second time. Modifying the bracket becomes very problematic. This is not a plug-and-play system, so you will have to fabricate your own mounting brackets. The considerations when designing your mounting brackets are the step-up size from the connex columns to the sidewall, the space from the top edge of the connex to the roof ribs, the width of the sidewall corner structure, the size of the brackets and the new roof wall C-channel, and use common sense and choose thick wall strong steel. I made the brackets a quarter inch longer than the steel C channel and constructed a gusset to fit the connex square tube roof corner. It also compensates to avoid the roof ribs. It might also be helpful to use a 2x4 thick wall steel tube, but this is all that I had. With this design, that overhangs the side of the connex five and one quarter inch on each side and the inside dimension of the roof structure being 38 feet. Take 38 feet and add five and one quarter inch twice to get the actual inside dimension of the connexes. Then set your connexes in place and level them. This was my third time doing it. Third time's a charm, right? Now then, should I go with the brackets that are depicted in the engineering prints, or should I do some modification, do my own thing? This, I believe, is a much neater way. <coughs> and my engineer said it's actually better to do it on the inside to keep the C-channel from buckling in on itself. Otherwise, it's virtually the same. So this is what I'm going to do because I have to mount these onto these brackets. And because this is only a uh, two by three, I've only got so much room in here. This one, I could do it either way because I've got much more room. But even this one is just a little bit short. If I was to put one on one side, one on the other, I'm gonna have a little bit of overhang. So I'm gonna just put everything just like this. Even though the engineering prints do not depict it this way, that's what I'm going to do. Don't worry too much about precision. As you can see there's a little bit more space on that side than there is on this side. And it doesn't exactly line up with the holes. So don't worry too much about precision. If you're a little anal like I am with the engineering that we do, um, this is probably going to um, cause you some stress. But I don't think that you should stress over it too much. Because of the custom brackets that I have made, remember this is eight and one quarter inch, so that it'll have an eighth inch here and an eighth inch here. I'm gonna have one and a quarter inch from here to this point, and I'm going to center up this bracket right in the center. I know it's going to overhang just a little bit here, but it will be supported by these bolts. So it should come out the C channel, come across here, and here should be good to go if you use a two by four uh thick wall steel then you don't have to run into that problem uh this is just what i had so this is what i'm using it's time to get things set up and drill some holes
I think I may have heat treated this when I welded it. Well, I was going to weld them, and then I decided that, uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and bolt them since I do have the bolts. But now I think I'm going to weld them. I think that's going to be easier and a lot faster. Well, it is 52,000 PSI steel, so it is uh, mighty tough. So I'm just going to go ahead and weld. That's just going to be the easy option for me, and it'll be much quicker too. Probably just as strong, if not more so. And it's always a good idea to get all of that paint off of there because, uh, you know, the paint is just going to cause problems when you weld um, and you just don't want it on there. So here we go. Well, I thought I should show this. Um, these cuts, they're not square. So I think it's best to... If you're going to do it this way, just put your square against here. Get all this squared up, this face squared up. Then make your measurement. Make sure that it's where you want it to be. And then weld. They're not precision parts. What can I say? So it might be best for these end pieces to be done at the same time so that you make sure to get one on one side, one on the other, because these are the two that are different. The rest of them that go in the middle, those are all the same. But these on the ends, they have to be different. Everybody's got to be different. First, I'm going to have to grind off any rust or paint that will be in my welding area. I do this by measuring from the end of the Connex ISO block 4 inches. Because the C-channel column is 3.5 inches wide, and there is a half inch end gap from the engineering prints, I make the mark 4 inches inside from the end. I use the fabricated bracket to mark the areas that I will need to remove paint from, and begin grinding. Oh yeah, yeah. You might want to look away at this point. Um, yeah, I, I had to get the welder up there. It's kind of heavy. And I didn't have a long enough extension, so I'm sorry about that, but uh, you got to use what you got to use. All right, now that it's up here, I am going to spray the inside with this cold galvanizing compound that's the inside and then this outside i prefer using it is a filler primer gray made by rust-oleum i love this stuff um, it's going to fill up all of those little spaces you know with the wind blowing sometimes it blows your gas away and you don't get a perfect weld there's like a tiny little um, inclusion there it is going to fill that up and seal it really nice If you're wondering what I did to center this up or put it where it needed to be, the engineering print, I'll put that right up there, says this has to be a half inch from this surface right here, half inch, right? Okay. This surface, I welded that bracket, as you can see there. I welded that bracket right on the edge. So this comes down to here. This is three and a half inches. So all I did was measure from here to here, four inches, okay? And that lines this right up, four inches. This is the three and a half. It gives me the half inch on this side. So how do I set myself up for success when I'm talking about these that go in the the middle areas. Now remember, all of these are the same. What I'm going to do, and what I've done here, is I have put, that's OC for on center, I have drawn a line on here, and my intent 
is to at every nine foot interval, I want to center this bracket up. So I have to put this bracket on in such a way that the, not this is centered, but the three and a half inch wide kneeling wall is centered. Let me show you how. Some of you are going to be saying, hey, they're not exactly three and a half. I know that. They're not precision parts, but they're pretty close. Anyway, half a three and a half is one and three quarter. So I'm going to go half inch one, half inch, there's three quarter right there. And half inch one, half inch, there's three quarter right there. All right, that is not where this is going to set, but where the kneeling wall is going to sit. So I need to either put it, put this bracket right on the edge, just on the inside of here, or just on the inside of here. Check your print to make sure that it's either this way or that way. I'm going to leave that part up to you. Time to sink or swim. Remember that I'm not going to use the prints as they are assigned. I'm actually going to put this bracket on the inside of the C-channel. Okay, so results may differ. I have checked my engineering print, and this is where the Connex roof is going to be, designated by this straight edge, that right angle. And, and I've also seen that this bracket will go onto this side. So I've lined it up just inside this mark because that is where that kneeling um, wall will be. And I've also centered it up. This is the center of the bracket. This is not the center of this, but as you can see, this hole is a little smaller than, I'm sorry, that edge is a little smaller than that edge. So this is a little bit misaligned on the cut. So I measured from this side to where half would be in between here, got that measurement, lined it up with that measurement. Being that this is eight and one quarter, I should have an eighth inch on each side. So I can pretty much guarantee that if I center this bracket up with this, it will work. Got it? Great. Now it's nothing more than weld, rinse, and repeat. And then also weld those brackets onto the Connex in the correct orientation and the correct position. I'm not going to show a bunch of that because, well, I already showed you the first one. And, you know, shooting a YouTube video takes a lot longer than actually just doing the work yourself. So uh, I'm going to save me some time and... I'm going to allow you to do that at home and get that all done. I'll show you what I have after I'm done. Sound fair? All right. See you next time. I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there. And God bless. Oh, I also forgot to tell you. Did you know that you're going to need to cope? Cope? Some of these parts? What does cope mean? It means you need to cut out pieces of it so that they can stick together. So there are sections of these, of these uh, C channels that you're going to have to cut. Now, it did give me an excuse to buy a plasma cutter, um, cu cu a plasma cutting torch, but um, this is what I was not expecting. Um, and if you don't have one, you can just do it with, a, with an angle grinder, but uh, don't be very upset when you see that in your plans. Just know that that's just part of the gig. Really be cool if they manufactured them that way so that you don't have to do that extra step. Lord knows you probably paid for that extra step, but it's not going to happen. You're going to have to cope. You're going to have to cope with it. Till next time. Since I'm sick of musicians stealing my content for five seconds of their music, uh, this ending will be uh, from me. Doom, 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 doom,